Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. My name's Jace, and if your early potatoes look like this come the end of June, they're ready. They're ready to harvest. So I've got eight pots here of Charlotte potatoes. These are a second early, and uh, they were they were planted around mid-March. It's now the 30th of June, and you can see the foliage has died right back and these were part of an experiment so we've got eight pots we've got two at this end which were my homemade compost we've got two pots here which were plain shop bought compost we've got two here which were uh, shop bought compost with fish blood and bone and then we've got two here which were shop bought compost with a fertilizer called six times or six X and we're going to see which one which compost and which fertilizer has produced the most potatoes they've all had exactly the same amount of water throughout the growing time and the one thing I will say is the ones at this end grew much lower in height these ones were much higher now, there can only really be two reasons for that. One was the sun, that's south over there. So the ones at the back might have been growing taller to get more sunlight above the shade of the others. Or it could just be that the fish blood and bone and the six times had so much nitrogen in it that it produced a lot more in the way of vegetation. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get more potatoes in the ground or more weight of potatoes. So we're going to find out today. So what I'm going to do is tip these buckets into the wheelbarrow behind me. We're going to pull out all of the foliage and roots and things that we don't want, put those in the compost and we're going to fish out all the potato tubers and we're going to weigh them. And what I'll do is put both of these buckets in another tub uh, and hang them on some scales and we'll see what the results are then these two then these two and then these two so let's get on with it so first into the barrow is going to be the buckets that had six times fertilizer in so i'm just going to cut off the foliage get that out of the way that can go in the compost later. And we'll tip that bucket out into the wheelbarrow and see what we've got in there. Now I haven't watered these for probably a week because the plants had reached the end anyway. So uh, the compost is pretty dry so let's have a look let's see what we've got so first impressions the potatoes are looking a bit small in here as I find them nice size potatoes for Yeah, for salad potatoes. Now the compost I'm going to save. I'm going to put the waste waste in this bucket here. Yeah, some quite small ones. So 
So I'm going to get through these two buckets, these two buckets of um, six times fertilizer. And I shall bring you back when I've got them all sorted and we'll weigh them and see what we've got. One little tip, when you're harvesting your potatoes, don't throw them into a bucket because what you're going to do is bruise them and then they're going to rot really quick because I'm going to be storing a lot of these potatoes and you don't want them storing if they're going to rot right I'll carry on okay so that's the potatoes that came out of the two buckets with six times fertilizer in them so I've got my real cheap Amazon uh, weighing scales hung up there on the piece of wood now I haven't zeroed them for the weight of this plastic bucket so I'm going to weigh them now and then I will take off the weight of the bucket and let you know all the results at the end but we have 3.8 kilos with the bucket so I don't know what's that uh, two, four pounds four and a half pounds something like that so it's more than that isn't it about eight pounds yeah something like that so what I'm going to do now is do the next two buckets which are the, comp the shop bought compost with fish blood and bone and we'll see what results we get there six times fertilizer right let's get rid of these stalks right then this one out and see what we've got so I can see a few on the sides there there's a slug on one of them now that is a good point growing in pots like this does help to prevent pest damage and I'm not going to say it eliminates it because it doesn't but it does help so I always go round the outside grab the ones that I can see before breaking the root ball apart because it is amazing how easy it is to miss some of the potatoes so if you see them grab them straight away now the process I used for growing these I did do a video on I'll put a link to that in the description and it was four seed potatoes in each pot and because they're early potatoes they're um, determinate so that means that their height and shape is decided already it's determined then um, they can they only grow on one level under the ground so there's no need to mound these up like you would main crop potatoes or indeterminate potatoes 
so you can get away with putting the potatoes in on two different levels in the pot but I'll put a link to the video in the description so that you can go back and watch them now if you wanted to have a go at growing early potatoes like this you can do it again this year you could plant them now or next month July August and as long as you get some half decent weather through the rest of the summer and August uh, the autumn then you will have new potatoes around late autumn uh, Christmas time people actually do call them Christmas potatoes it's not something I normally do because I'd much prefer to have um, main crop potatoes on my Christmas dinner roast potatoes but you can do it and the other reason I don't do it is we grow grow so many potatoes that I don't need to grow anymore what we grow now and all the main crop potatoes that I've got grown as well they will get us through the year pretty much so that's why we we store them which I'll come on to later in the video and show you how I'm going to store these and um, yeah a lot of potatoes but we're a family of three and we will eat new potatoes now pretty much almost almost every night until these have gone and then the main crop potatoes you can see some there in pots they'll be ready so we'll start eating those and also store those through the winter doesn't seem to be as many potatoes in this one this is the fish blood and bone I would say and I haven't weighed anything yet obviously but I would say at the moment the six times is winning but we'll see one bucket you can't judge it on one bucket you know there could be some other reason that this particular bucket hasn't produced as many potatoes that's what's come out of there so that's from four seed potatoes and 40 litres of compost with fish blood and bone not that impressive to be honest Okay, this is what's come out of the uh, two buckets that had fish blood and bone added to them. That doesn't look anywhere near as much as the six times to me, but we'll see. So we will turn on the Amazon scales. That's at zero. Ooh, 2.64 kilos and the other one was 3.8 so at first glance six times is far better than fish blood and bone right what I'll do I'll do the next two buckets which are just 
plain shop bought compost. It's actually clover compost. So I won't film it all because these potato reveal videos, I do understand, can become a little bit sort of monotonous as you empty bucket after bucket after bucket of potatoes. So I'll get those emptied and I'll bring you back to show you the way in for those two buckets. That is the result of two buckets of plain shop-bought compost. Not particularly impressive, I wouldn't say. In fact, I'm not certain the harvest this year are as good as last year completely, but never mind, see what this weighs. Two point three kilos. So slightly less than the fish blood and bone, and much less than the six times. Now let me write that down. So what we're going to do now is my homemade compost. Now obviously I would love that to win. It did last year, but every year you make compost it can be slightly different depending on what you've got to put in the compost to make it. So I'm going to video these two only because if my homemade compost wins I will be elated but there will be someone out there that will comment in the, below in the comments and say well you didn't film it all did you so how do we know your compost really won so just for that reason I'm going to video it all and if you don't want to watch me actually emptying the pots and everything just skip forward in the video to the bit where I actually weigh them so I'll get the camera set up and we'll crack on As you can see, a lot more weeds in the homemade compost. So they will, without doubt, have taken some nutrients from the compost which may have affected the growth of the potatoes. But we're going to find out now. Well, it's definitely not bulging with more potatoes at the moment that I can see. Okay, so that's all the ones from the edge that I can find. Let's try and break this apart. Oh, much tougher to break apart. too bad.
I do keep these small ones off when we harvest because you can chuck these in a frying pan very quickly fry them up all the tiny little ones they actually make quite a nice little snack to the end of that pot. Come on up. They're still coming. Now that's the original seed potato. Okay. That's it for that pot. Next one.
car, I think that's it. So, that emptied. So I need to adjust the camera now, so you can see the scales. So that's what we've got from the two shop bought, sorry, homemade compost buckets. Zero. Two point five. Two point five dead. So homemade compost this year. Nowhere near as good. I think in fact I think it's come second. So what we'll do now is weigh the bucket empty. I'll do the maths and I shall tell you the results. So the bucket's empty. Weighs 330 grams. So I'll quickly do the maths and I'll bring you back. So, the results. So on this highly technical scoreboard, we have the different buckets and the feeds that was in them. So we've got six times fertilizer there at the top, fish blood and bone there, plain shop bought compost there, and homemade compost here. So we've got three columns. We've got the gross weight, including the bucket, the net weight without the bucket and then a conversion to pounds for old school people and our American friends as well. So the six times produced a gross weight of 3.8 kilograms. Take off the weight of the bucket that was 3.47 kilograms and converted 7.65 pounds of spuds and very nice spuds they are too. We're going to enjoy those. The next two buckets had fish blood and bone added to them and they produced 2.64 kilograms gross. Take away the weight of the bucket that equaled 2.31 kilograms and convert it to pounds 5.08 pounds of early second early Charlotte potatoes. Then we had two buckets of plain shop bought compost. They brought in 2.3 kilograms gross, 1.97 kilograms net, and 4.34 pounds of potatoes. And that was the worst performing buckets out of all of them, the plain shop bought compost. And then we had two buckets of homemade compost, which brought in 2.5 kilos gross, 2.17 kilos net, 4.78 pounds. And here they are. So, not a great result for my homemade compost this year. Last year it came top. However, last year I used, I didn't use six times fertilizer. But at least my homemade compost didn't come last this year. So not all is lost. So in total, we got 9.92 kilograms of potatoes or 21.82 pounds. And that was from eight 40 litre pots of compost and uh, four seed potatoes in each pot. So not a terrible result. I have had better. 
This year's been a bit strange for growing most things, I think, and um, certainly with seedlings, germination rates and stuff like that, it's been terrible. But we do have some nice potatoes as well to eat. Now, clearly the six times compost smashed all the others into oblivion. And I've heard good things about this six times and I thought I'd try it this year. I've put it around my rhubarb which now looks like it should be growing in the Jurassic period. But it really does seem to be good stuff. And it's called six times because it is apparently supposed to cover six times the area of farmyard manure. I will definitely be using it again. And had I used six times in all of those buckets, I would have been looking at something around 15 kilograms in total of potatoes instead of just under 10. That's a big difference, massive difference. So I will definitely be trying it again next year. And I will be trying it on other crops as well, I think. Um, so on that note, there is going to be another potato experiment video in the next week or two because not only did I do these potatoes I did some lady crystal potatoes which are a first early and they're in pots down here and I haven't touched them and what I did there was I compared six times fertilizer against a specific potato feed I think it was a Vitax feed and that's going to be quite interesting to see now, Com considering the results of this six times, that's going to be interesting to see which one performs better, the six times or the Vitax potato feed. That video is going to be coming up in the next week or two. So if you don't want to miss the results of that video, then hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, click notifications, click the bell, all of that stuff, and you'll be notified when I put that video out. In the meantime, let's get these potatoes stored. I'll show you how I do that. All I do is put a couple of inches of compost, the compost that they grew in, in the bottom of one of the pots, and then take the potatoes. And you have to inspect every single potato before you store them. If you see any that are damaged in any way, got holes in them from bugs, um, anything like that, then they will go into a separate bucket and will more than likely go up to the house and get used first. We'll chop out any bad bits and use those first. Only store the really good potatoes. So get your potatoes and lay them out on the compost so that they're not touching each other and mustn't touch each other. And fill one layer, a complete layer of potatoes like that. Don't wash them, don't wipe the dirt off them, don't do anything like that. Just put them in there, in the pot, so that they are not touching each other. Inspect each one as you do it. It takes a while. And then when you've got that layer in, Add another layer, a couple of inches of compost. And that's all there is to it. Now I've got another layer of compost in. I'll do another layer of potatoes. Again, mustn't touch each other. And that is it, and you keep doing that until the pot is full. Make sure it's 
the last layer is a good layer of compost so there's no daylight getting in and then put them somewhere cool a garage is good um, a cellar maybe if you've got one as long as it's not too damp I tend to put them in the shed under the worktop and they seem to do just fine like that in fact we were still eating early potatoes very early this year from last year and that is all there is to it not technical obviously make sure where you put them vermin rats and such can't get to them because they will they will eat them they'll climb up on the pot somehow and munch their way through your potatoes